Thursday, January 30th, 2020, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, before I start today, I'd like to uh, tell my viewers again, especially the new viewers, that I do a video every day. If they enjoy my videos, make sure they look for them because uh, YouTube doesn't necessarily uh, always uh, notify people of uh, the channels and the videos uh, that you like. So this morning, I want to talk about this coronavirus. Um, I haven't really been covering too much. Uh, yes, there is a danger that it could trigger a massive slowdown in China. And I think that's becoming more and more probable now. I saw uh, an economist in China said that uh, Chinese GDP could drop to 5%, which is very low for China. This uh, past year, 2019, GDP was 6%, which was the lowest since 1990. Uh, and uh, looking at the markets uh, the last few days, yes, we dropped quite sharply on Monday. We've, we rebounded the next few days. Yesterday, uh, we were rebounding quite strongly uh, in the US and then we closed. Uh, stock markets didn't really do anything. S&P even finished down. And uh, overnight, things are getting worse in terms of the market. Uh, markets are lower. So I think this coronavirus could be the proverbial uh, snowflake that starts the avalanche. And what does that mean? Well, that means that um, our current financial monetary system is so overburdened by, by debt leverage that uh, any little thing could... Uh, bring it down like a house of cards or an avalanche. Uh, uh, Jim Rickards used that uh, analogy in one of his books. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we could be looking at, at that with the uh, coronavirus. Um, does that mean it's all gloom and doom for the world? No, <laughs> I actually think um, we need ups and downs in life, in the economy, in society. Uh, things are all about cycles. <laughs> we have night and day. Uh, we work and play during the day. We, we rest and go to sleep at night. And the economy is the same thing. And unfortunately, the central bankers haven't allowed that to happen since uh, 08. Uh, <laughs> the economy wanted to rest. The system wanted to rest and reinvent itself in 08. And they didn't allow that to happen. So it might look like gloom and doom, but personally, I think that would be the best thing that could happen uh, to uh, the system. Uh, 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 turmoil, an implosion of the system, so we can start again. And this coronavirus looks like it could be the trigger. Um, just looking here at some of the headlines, uh, zero hedge says reporters claim to have proof China lying about virus death toll as total cases near 8,000, another 12,000 suspected. Uh, the FT says China's currency breaches key level on mounting virus fears. So I'm looking at zero hedge at FT. Um, don't want to just look at zero hedge. Some people say, oh, they're pushing clickbait. So I'm looking also at... <laughs> like mainstream uh, FT, says Asian markets slide with European and US equities also poised to sustain a, a heavy blow. Coronavirus infection set to overtake SARS total. Coronavirus outbreak poses challenge to Xi Jinping top-down rule. How dangerous is new coronavirus and other questions answered. So that's the FT. Uh, so what's happening overnight then? Well, we had the uh, Federal Reserve decision. No surprise there. <laughs> I had the uh, pleasure <laughs> of watching um, Jay Powell's press conference. Uh, it's very frustrating to think that uh, a few bureaucrats like Jay Powell uh, are taken so seriously <laughs> and that they're supposed to decide the rate of interest that borrowers and lenders charge to each, each other in an economy of 300 
million people. Uh, and you could argue in an economy of 7 billion because the Federal Reserve is the central bank uh, of the world, really, the most important one. Uh, it's just frustrating. And it's also frustrating uh, listening to the questions of these supposed journalists and reporters. Uh, they didn't ask him any tough questions. Didn't, uh, they never asked him that question. If we are supposedly in a free market uh, capitalist economy, how come you're deciding rates, uh, Mr. Powell? That, that was very frustrating. Uh, the markets uh, didn't really uh, react very well to uh, the FOMC decision or the press conference, or maybe it was because of something else. But uh, the Dow yesterday finished up only 11. S&P finished down about three points. So it wasn't a great day. Uh, right now, uh, as I speak here, 8.30 a.m. London time, we've got gold up $5, 15.82. So we're almost back to the uh, recent highs we've had this year at 15.88. So good gold still doing well. I heard someone, one of my viewers, comment on Twitter yesterday to me. They said uh, MSNBC is saying that gold's doing well because of the coronavirus. Uh, yeah, that couldn't be further from the truth. Gold's doing well because of a fragile monetary system, a system based on never-ending debt, money printing, uh, inflation, fiat currency inflation. And you can bet the central bankers are going to use the only tool they know how to use, which is uh, more money creation, more rate cuts, more QE. If things really uh, get worse uh, economically and financially uh, because of the coronavirus. So gold doing quite well. Silver uh, now picking up. It looks like we held that 1750 level. Yes, we went below it. But right now it's up almost 20 cents at 17.73, up 1%. Uh, so we've got the Dow futures down 207 right now, 28,530. It's been as far down as 28,476, so almost 300 points. Uh, S&P future down 27 or 0.82 of a percent at 3245. Yesterday we almost got back up to 33 in the. Uh, S&P, uh, but we closed below 32.82, which I think was a key level. NASDAQ 100 future is down 85, down almost 1%. Uh, for an exchange market, uh, sterling uh, breaking through that 130 level, we're down about a quarter of a percent, 129.82. The euro is steady, 110.18. The dollar's down point. Uh, two of a percent against the Japanese yen. Uh, the Chinese uh, yuan uh, continues to weaken. The dollar did rally just above seven uh, overnight. Right now it's at 699.60. Crude oil continue to uh, suffer here. Uh, slower economic growth around the world means less demand for uh, energy and oil. I saw OPEC is <laughs> already talking about meeting to try to uh, counter uh, this move because of uh, fears of the coronavirus. Uh, WTI is down 1.6 at 52.50. Brent is down one and three quarter percent at 57.93. And the bond market, as I said earlier in the week uh, or a few days ago, I made a, a video uh, talking about how it's reinverting again. And the key uh, uh, part of the curve uh, for inversion uh, that gives a really not uh, too positive signal for the economy is the three month to the 10 year. Uh, I've been covering the Fed funds rate that's similar to the three month rate. So right now this morning, we've got the three month uh, yield, T-bill yield at 156. And we got the 10 year yield down another three and a half basis points. I think it was down seven yesterday. Uh, it's at 156 as well. So we've got the three to tens almost inverted. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if we invert by the end of the week or even by uh, the end of uh, today. 
Uh, so the bond market not pointing uh, to good uh, things ahead for the economy. Um, and I think it's going to be very different this time in terms of the central banks uh, putting a put uh, into the market to try to stop a correction uh, of the stock market. Uh, Jay Powell yesterday, someone asked him, one of the reporters asked him, don't you think the stock market is overvalued? And uh, he went on to... Uh, his reasoning that the Fed looks not only at uh, the stock market, it, but it looks at uh, private debt, government debt, corporate debt, all this spiel, right? Trying to uh, basically uh, fool people into thinking that they're not really worried about the stock market. But I think this is a could be a big one, as I said, this the impact from the coronavirus could be huge uh, on actual economic activity and the Fed can print as much money as it wants or the ECB or the BOE or the People's Bank of China but if there's no economic activity if people are not doing as much as they usually do there's nothing they can do about it and that's why I think it could be different this time and why is the coronavirus why could it be really serious for the world economy? Well, um, China, of course, is the world's second big, biggest economy. If uh, their economy uh, has to cope with this outbreak, if it gets more serious, if it expands from Wuhan and the Hubei province, you could see a complete uh, grinding to a halt of the economy for a month or two or who knows uh, this has probably never happened before uh, and then it would uh, impact the whole world uh, Jay Powell again said that uh, the US shouldn't really be too worried about uh, world trade because the 85% uh, of the uh, US economy is domestic that the US doesn't do too much trade but I think he's being uh, a little bit uh, economical uh, with the truth there. I think it would impact the whole world, including the US. And and uh, that's not even um, extrapolating uh, as to whether this virus could spread to other parts of the world and slow down other parts of the world. This is just China uh, uh, I'm covering here. So pretty serious. So what do we do in this situation? Uh, well, um, I never change <laughs> my uh, idea, my opinion about how to protect uh, myself. And if you want to do it yourself as well, uh, it's up to you. Uh, monetary wise, always be outside the system as much as possible. Have precious metals, uh, have silver, have some cryptocurrency if you want. I have some. Uh, uh, have. Uh, tangible goods, have little debt, uh, don't depend on the bankers. Yes, and um, live within your means as well. <laughs> live within your means, uh, be healthy, you need to be healthy. Uh, the less healthy you are, the more susceptible to uh, getting ill <laughs> you are. So, uh, I'm not going to get too much into that. I'm not a doctor or uh, anything like that, but uh, it's just common sense. Uh, it's not all gloom and doom. <laughs> I lived, grew up in Brazil. Uh, Brazil has had several currencies in the last 50 years and it wasn't the end of the world. Uh, I think uh, people who uh, try to uh, sell gloom and doom too much don't do people a service. If anything, it could uh, provide opportunities for people and it could help the long-term picture of our economies, of our financial system, of our monetary system. Ideally, of course, we want to see uh, central banks go the way of the dinosaur. We've had central banks for almost 350 years. I think it's about time they went into, uh, they became extinct, basically. 
Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. Uh, please share this video far and wide. Uh, hit the little notification bell above as well to be notified of all my new videos. And you can also follow me on Twitter, BitChute, Facebook, Steemit, and DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.